feel like your head is spinning sometimes? We all do because of our brain chemicals. Once your brain releases a chemical, it gets you going and you hardly even know why. We have happy brain chemicals and unhappy brain chemicals. It's good to know more about them. I was so glad when I figured this all out. I think you'll like it too. Here are the happy chemicals that you've probably heard about. Dopamine, endorphin, oxytocin, and serotonin. The unhappy chemical, cortisol, you've probably heard a lot about that too. When your dopamine is released, you feel good and your brain looks for a way to release more. The same with all the others. Your brain rewards you with a good feeling when you see a way to meet your needs. You, the good feeling motivates you to go toward anything that triggers your dopamine, endorphin, oxytocin, or serotonin. But that good feeling stops in a short time, and that's why we're always looking for ways to get more. Lots of things trigger your cortisol, and you feel bad. When your cortisol is flowing, it feels like your survival is threatened and you gotta make it stop fast. That's why we're always looking for ways to make our cortisol stop. It's interesting to know more about what turns on our happy chemicals and what turns off our happy chemicals. Why can't I feel good all the time and stop feeling bad forever? You may be saying, that's not how I think. I'm not looking around for threats. I don't reward myself with happy chemicals for meeting a need. Well, it's interesting to know that the only part of your brain you're aware of is like the frosting on this cupcake. That's the part that's your verbal inner dialogue that you notice. But underneath that frosting, there's a lot more going on. And it's all good. It's like cake. There's no reason to think there's anything bad about it. In fact, it's the physiology, it's the chemistry, it's the electricity that drives you to meet your needs. We've inherited this operating system from our mammalian ancestors, and it has kept them surviving for 200 million years. So it's nice to know more about how it works, how it turns on our happy chemicals, and how we can use it to get less of our unhappy chemicals. This is the brain we've inherited from our ancestors. Here's the cortex which is what you see in images of the brain, and it's all those billions of neurons that help us figure out what's going on around us. But we also have a brain stem that connects our brain to our spinal cord. And we mammals inherited our brain stem from our reptilian ancestors. So your brain stem helps you do everything that a reptile can do, like breathe, move, figure out what to move toward and what to pull away from. But there's more good stuff going on here. Inside the center of our cortex, we have these little bits and parts that you've probably heard about, like the amygdala, the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and a bunch of other bits and parts known as the limbic system. And these matter to you a lot because they control your happy chemicals. So let's talk more about how they work and why your happy chemicals are always going on and off and why we wish we'd have them on all the time, but that's just not how they work. You're probably wondering what turns on your happy chemicals, and it's interesting to know that every one of them creates a different feeling and it turns on for a specific reason because it has a specific job to do in the state of nature. For example, Dopamine turns on when you feel like you're about to get a reward. It releases your reserve tank of energy when you're just about to meet a need. And it feels good. Endorphin is curious. We've heard a lot about it in the context of runner's high. But it's interesting to know that endorphin is only released when you're in pain. That doesn't seem to make sense, and we'll talk a lot more about it later. But it's very easy to imagine an animal that's bitten by a predator and needs to run away. It needs all its energy, and endorphin masks pain with a great feeling. And that helps us survive. Oxytocin is the good feeling that you can trust those around you. 
In the state of nature, it doesn't help to trust everybody. You'd soon be gobbled up. So it's very important to know who you can trust and who you can't trust. When your oxytocin is released, you feel safe around those you're with, and it feels great. So we're always looking for ways to stimulate more. Serotonin is complicated. We've heard a lot about it, but it's interesting to know that in the animal world, animals are always competing for the one-up position. The bottom animal often has food grabbed from him by a bigger animal, so every animal survives by learning to assert itself to get food, to get mating opportunity, and to survive. And that happens when he sees, she sees, that she's in a position where she can meet her needs despite the competition. She releases some serotonin, he goes for it, and it feels great. And that's why we're always looking for ways to trigger more serotonin. Now you may be wondering, if all these happy chemicals are released to reward a mammal for doing things that meet its survival needs, why are humans always doing things that seem to hurt our survival just to feel happy. For example, you can probably think of lots of bad habits that people around you have that are not good for them in the long run, but make them happy in the short run. How does our brain do things to trigger happy chemicals that are not really good for us? Well, our brain has some quirky ways of defining survival. You were born with billions of neurons, but very few connections between them. We build those connections from life experience, and those connections tell us how to turn on our happy chemicals. For example, we're all born helpless and vulnerable, and when we're hungry, our glucose falls and we have an explosion of cortisol that makes us cry. But when we cry, something good happens, something that meets our needs we get some delicious milk. And that builds a pathway in your brain. That's the experience that says, wow, something is good for me and delicious. What is this stuff? And the next time you feel bad, you have a pathway in your brain that turns on. It's like, I want more of that stuff. That's what I need to meet my needs. But when you're a baby, you have no way of getting it. So you feel desperate again. Your cortisol turns on. You cry. And guess what happens? You hear your mother's footsteps. And that's the next experience that builds a pathway in your brain. And now, the next time you hear your mother's footsteps, you stop crying because your brain has a pathway between that sound and the experience of meeting your needs. And all this happens without you ever needing to know what milk is or what a mother is. Now, lots and lots of dopamine experiences and serotonin experiences and op oxytocin experiences and endorphin experiences, over time they built your neural network and that's how your brain looks at the world today. That's what turns on your happy chemicals. And when you think about what it takes to feel good and what it takes to survive, that's what your brain knows. Now you may be thinking, yeah, but what it takes to feel good and what it takes to survive are not always the same thing. But the operating system you've inherited from your mammalian ancestors thinks they're the same thing. And that's why our brains are all a little quirky. Let's take a closer look at these neural pathways to understand why. When you were born, your brain was very soft so everything that triggered your happy chemicals built a little pathway in your brain. So, something that triggered your dopamine built a little pathway. One day your oxytocin was triggered built a little pathway. Something that triggered your endorphin, your um, serotonin, a little more dopamine. But anything that happened to you again and again, that pathway built bigger and stronger. And so, over time, you ended up with the neural network that told your brain that's how to turn on your happy chemicals. You may be thinking, that's not me. I don't rely on my old pathways to decide what's good for me. Well, to understand 
the power of these pathways that build up big over time, we need to zoom in even closer. Your brain is always trying to make sense of the world by taking in information from your senses, which sends electricity to your cortex. That electricity has to find a place to flow. And guess what it does? It relies on the pathways you've already built. The electricity in your brain flows like water in a storm, finding the paths of least resistance. So any paths you've built from past experience are going to give your electricity a place to flow, and that's going to be more likely the experience you're going to have. It would be great if your happy chemicals flowed all the time and you could stop your cortisol forever. But unfortunately, our operating system is not designed to work that way. In our next episode, we'll take a closer look at what turns on the happy chemicals in the state of nature and what turns them on in the quirky pathways we build from life experience. We'll try to figure out what you can do to get more happy chemicals and less unhappy. Look forward to seeing you then.